So Katie, you've talked about lots of lines of therapy. I think, at least in my practice, I'm going to use the HRD test, and I'm going to, if the HRD, HRD test is positive, I might use PARP inhibitors earlier. See what I'm saying? It, 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 because it's about sequencing. Right. And the, and the thing we do the worst is sequence. I don't know which drug to give before what drug. Well, we've been entirely empiric for our whole yeah. life. <laughs> oh. So I think yes and maybe not quite yes. So on one hand, you could, you have a platinum sensitive patient, you send the Myriad My Choice or potentially someday the, the, the um, Clovis test and you know who your patient is who's most likely to benefit. And maybe that helps you select your strategy for treating that patient. Are you going to go down a bevacizumab and then bevacizumab maintenance pathway with an overall survival benefit, hmm. but nowhere near that PFS benefit that we're seeing? Or are you going to move niraparib up into that line of therapy as more a switch maintenance where you do whatever chemotherapy right. backbone you choose to do, which could include doxel in that line because right. it doesn't matter. And then, and then move to niraparib because of that PFS benefit. And again, we're comparing completely different patient populations. The patients who are enrolled on this study had to respond to their frontline therapy or their, uh, their recurrent therapy, and then they went on. Whereas in your study, yeah. you're basing it from the time you become platinum sensitive and right. you get chemo. So you're going to half of those patients never made it to niriparib. So you right. can't compare, it's so, real hard to compare the PFSs so and go, this is better than that. Right, and I, I think the, the nuance here is really important because is your practice, so in all of these trials that have a switch maintenance, there's a large proportion of patients who didn't have a complete response. As I was gonna right. say, it so, changes the whole paradigm so of maintenance, it, it, right? So, so to me, that needs to be sorted out. I'm sorry, but I don't, I find it very hard to take a patient off of active therapy I know is working to put them on a, 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 a trial with a switch maintenance is where it's placebo controlled. That's not my practice. My practice is take CR patients or patients who are intolerant to chemo and then maybe try that particular option. So, in the, so let me see that data and okay. I, then that might be practice changing. So in the December 6, 2016 BEV approval, it's true maintenance. You get chemotherapy exactly. BEV, whether it's carbogenum or carbopaclitaxel, and the chemotherapy ultimately stops, but the BEV continues. continues yeah. Now what you're talking about, you respond to platinum, and then you, it's sort of maintenance, but you switch it. But you might have just a partial response. Yeah, which but is a real change. That's what I want to, what's the difference between maintenance and treatment? Right. Exactly. That's exactly right. right. So what I'm saying so is, almost, right. don't, it's, just, don't it's really with, switch treatment. It's switch right. treatment. You're switching it's to switch something treatment. different. So, and you switch treatment to placebo. So, yeah. so the three month in the, so look at the control group. So the three month difference is basically the first CAT scan, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Sometimes they, it's five, so, sometimes yeah, it's Yeah, but, well, no, I'm saying, if you have a proportion of patients that have no, yeah. they have a complete response, yeah. then I would expect to see that, right? Because what it's is two, it? It's two assessments. Right. right. So, you know, but if you think about our own, our, what's status. the progression of survival in a platinum sensitive patient who gets a complete response? And that's why I use the HRD example, because mm -hmm. HRD is going to guide me to more treatment based with these agents, mm -hmm. because these patients need a holiday at some point. Right. And, and I, the sequencing, the holiday is some of the most difficult issues. So it, it is, is truly maintenance then only when there's a CR? Is that what you're saying? Well, you know what's going to help though address that question is, is an exploratory analysis of 213, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you have that in your protocol to mm -hmm. evaluate patients who have BRCA versus non BRCA yes, mutation patients. Absolutely. That's going to help guide us in the future and address this question because it could be that the benefit, you know, I, I don't think there'll be a benefit in that group with BEV because the GOG 218 data was essentially negative, mm -hmm, right? Was. But it might be helpful in terms of seeing what the difference is in outcome, mm -hmm. you know, to get those numbers. So, so I, want to, I want to move past this, but I want to get some, some clarity. So we love to teach people and we're here today. You're teaching me and I appreciate it. I'm still confused about this maintenance idea. In the, in the NOVA trial, maintenance is in the title, but half of the patients still have cancer. So mm -hmm. it's, it's how can I call that maintenance if there's measure, if there's can't you know if they still have, if they had PRs to their last treatment? Well, so I always learned that when somebody had a CR and you continue therapy, that's consolidation, oh. and then the maintenance was. Oh. And, but I think that what's happened is we've just used maintenance for everything, right? Okay. We still use that terminology, consolidation, correct? Yeah, and I mean, I, th I think a lot of people have kicked that around. We, we, a lot of, yeah. lot of people, the consolidation really comes out of the liquid-based right. tumors. Uh, it's usually a different regimen. That's right. 
And that's really, really where that's come from. In our trials heretofore that we've done in gynecologic malignancies, we've required a complete response, yeah. uh, or, uh, biochemical, based on C125, radiologic, and physical exam, right. all. Yeah. Yep. But not for 218. Not for 218. Correct. Right. Absolutely. No, no. All the it's trials that had, had concurrent followed by maintenance all allowed that. But if you look at um, 212, yeah. yep. you had to have a CR. All right. On to that. So that's interesting. It doesn't sound like we're going to get that solved, but I think that we're, we're <laughs> but, it, but I think we're, we're expanding the awareness of the subtleties of these, de mm -hmm. these definitions.